chapter 42, the basis of true education. True education is a grand science, for it is founded on the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. Christ is the greatest teacher this world ever knew, and it is not the pleasure of the Lord Jesus for the subjects of his kingdom, for whom he died, shall be educated in such a way that they shall be led to place the wisdom of men in the forefront and delegate to the wisdom of God, as revealed in his holy word, a place in the rear. True education is that which will train children and youth for the life that now is, and in reference to that which is to come, for an inheritance in that better country, even in an heavenly. They are to be trained for the country for which patriarchs and prophets look. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, in heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he hath prepared for them a city. The general method of educating the youth does not meet the standard of true education. Infidel sentiments are interwoven in the matter placed in textbooks, and the oracles of God are placed in a questionable or even an objectionable light. Thus the minds of youth become familiar with Satan's suggestions, and the doubts once entertained come to those who entertain them assured facts and scientific search is made misleading on account of the way its discoveries are interpreted and perverted. Men take it upon themselves to rein up the word of God before a finite tribunal and sentence is pronounced upon the inspiration of God according to finite measurement and the truth of God is made to appear as a thing uncertain before the records of science that these false educators exalt nature above nature's God and above the author of all true science. At the very time when teachers should have been firm and unwavering in their testimony, at the very time when it should have been made manifest that their souls were riveted to the eternal rock, when they should have been able to inspire faith in those who were doubting, they made admission of their own uncertainty as to whether the word of God or the discoveries of science falsely so-called were true. Those who were truly conscientious have been made to waver in their faith because of the hesitation of those who were professed expositors of the Bible when they dealt with the living oracles. Satan has taken advantage of the uncertainty of the mind, and through unseen agencies he has crowded in his sophistries and has caused men to become befogged in the mists of skepticism. Learned men have given lectures in which have been mingled truth and error, but they have unbalanced the minds of those who leaned over, who leaned toward error instead of toward truth. The nicely woven sophistries of the so-called wise men have a charm for a certain class of students. For the impression that these lectures leave upon the mind is that the God of nature is restricted by his own laws. The immutability of nature has been largely dwelt upon and the skeptical theories have been readily adopted by those whose minds chose the atmosphere of doubt because they were not in harmony with God's holy law, the foundation of his government in heaven and earth. Their natural tendency to evil made it easy for them to choose false paths and to doubt the reliability of both the Old and the New Testament records and history. Poisoned with error themselves, they have watched every opportunity to sow the seeds of doubt in other minds. Nature is extolled above the God of nature and the simplicity of faith is destroyed, for the foundation of faith is made to appear uncertain. Befogged in skepticism, the minds of those who doubt are left to beat on the rocks of infidelity. The Youth Instructor, January 21, 1895.